Welcome back to Desk Careers. I'm so excited to bring another incredible guest. For anybody watching this, we are having a live call with Ziad Bushnak, who is, as I like to describe him, a serial entrepreneur. He is currently the co-founder and managing director of Delectia. However, behind that role comes a, a serious entrepreneur who, over the series of his career, has had really incredible ventures and we will be talking about those today for anybody in our live classrooms i'm so excited to be taking ziad and uh, our interview into your live class thank you for joining us we're going to be talking about all things mr bushnak we're going to be talking about how a serial entrepreneur found a way to merge his passion for food with business genius ziad i could go on forever there's so many ways to be introducing you but i'd like to jump on in and bring you in thank you for having the time i know you're very busy thanks for being with us today Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Ziad, I have many, many questions. As you know, we talked before this. We had a couple of emails back and forth. Before we jump into those details, I want to take you down memory lane. I want to go all the way back to the time when you were about 16 years old. You know, sitting and watching this right now will be students between the ages of 16 and 18. And then, of course, we'll have our younger students who will be watching the recorded interview. And, and they're at a stage where they're trying to find a way to connect the dots between what they're studying and how it's going to add value to their future career aspirations. Everybody has an opinion about what a young person should be doing. But when we're talking about preparing them for the world of business and the world of being an entrepreneur, it's really interesting to understand the thought process that a successful entrepreneur has found his way through. So let's go back. Did you always know that this was what you wanted to do? Well, at, at 16, 16 to 18, I, I, I went off to college at 17. And by the time I was 16, I had no clue what I wanted to do, honestly. <laughs> and I, I actually, I'm, I come from a, a family of engineers. They're all engineers. My brother, my, my father, my, my uncles, everybody, everybody are engineers. So it was just meant to be, you know, you're studying and you're becoming an engineer. So, and that's so, <laughs> I went off to college to study engineering. One semester into it, I found that's not me. This is just, I can't be that. And um, talked to my father and switched to marketing and finance. Um, as I, I don't know if you want to know this, but I am uh, I was born here. I was born and raised in the UAE. I lived here all my life, went to college to the US, and I studied marketing and finance. This is what my major was. I like that you're bringing that in. You're putting it into context that... You, you went against what everybody expected you to do. You know, thinking back to that time, what was that conversation like with your father? Was it an easy conversation to have? Was it challenging? It was very difficult, very difficult, but very challenging. And um, it was basically, I had to be prepared. I had to be prepared and <laughs> having the conversation. Um, it's not just, I chose something that is, maybe easier, something that is, I, I didn't want that to be, uh, you know, the, the answer. It's not about that. It's about the personality. It's about what I wanted to be happy doing. Um, from a young age, I knew I, I wanted to work with something that I enjoy, something that I'm happy about. And this is my advice to everybody, honestly, is always, always choose what you like, what you uh, enjoy doing. It's not, it's not about um, the what you it's not about really what your major in because if you if you put it if you're doing well at anything that you're doing you're going to excel at whatever it is so if i was an engineer and i did the same mentality with engineering i would have excelled at engineering i excelled at what i wanted to do because i was happy doing that so as long as you're happy doing what you wanted to do you're going to excel at it let's talk about and i completely have your i'm completely singing the same tune. If you're enjoying what you're doing, obviously you're going to want to do more of it and you're going to be thriving at it. 
Now, I know in front of us are business students who are looking at the world of entrepreneurship. In looking at your degree, you studied finance and you studied marketing. If if we won't we won't refer to the de- to the year that you did these degrees, <laughs> but in saying that, I mean thinking it was, it was, it was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> if we're looking at just the one focus of marketing, I mean I'm imagining marketing when you graduated and marketing today completely. It's almost like two different worlds. How relevant was your degree to what you're doing right now as an entrepreneur? And and by relevant, I don't mean any disrespect. I am pro-education. I am a very academic-driven person. However, in saying that, I am an academic with focus-driven. So when we're helping young people to choose those pathways, I'm always saying, try to connect the dots. So how do those dots connect for you between what you studied and what you're doing as an entrepreneur? Okay. Let me, maybe if I can put this as a story into context, um, maybe it will make a lot more sense. If we go into the first job I ever got, um, it, it was the first professional job. I had, I had many jobs during college and I worked all kinds of um, uh little jobs everywhere from security uh, to uh, restaurants to cleaning to hosting to everything so i did i, I was always working um, but let's say when i graduated my first job was uh, with Merrill Lynch and uh, that took me a while to get that job it actually took four months for me to just you know going after the hr going after the manager and just bombarding them with phone calls, visits, you know, I it took after graduation, like two months later, I had a list of companies and nobody was clicking. And I'm sitting there worried that I'm not, I'm never going to get a job. So I took the top name on my list and I said, okay, I'm going to focus on this one. So I started, you know, doing my calls, finding my, my way in, knowing who the managers are. I interviewed with the manager, started calling him every week. You know, how are you? How are you doing? Everything's good. <laughs> uh, one time I was here. It's uh, UAE. So I went, I took a holiday and went to Jordan. I called him from Jordan and I said, yeah, Mr. Uh, XYZ, um, I'm in Jordan. But if you'd like me to come back, I would come back. No problem. You just let me know. <laughs> when would you like to see me again? So he said, Ziad, how long are you going to be in Jordan? I told him, whatever you like. <laughs> Two days, three days, one week. He said, come back and come to see me uh, in a couple of days. So I went back, I went to see him in a couple of days and went to his office and he had a piece of paper on the desk, face down. And he said, Ziad, I'm gonna give you an offer and this is your offer and it's not negotiable. If you want to negotiate salary or if you wanna negotiate position, the offer is off. I said, okay, I'm in, I'll sign immediately. He turned it up. He gave it to me. I looked at it. I couldn't say anything. I signed it. And he said, you know why I'm giving you the offer? It's because you're persistent and you kept at it and you didn't lose hope after four months of seeing me. You didn't lose hope and you're persistent. And I honestly want you to stop calling me. (laughs) (laughs) And that's how I got my first offer. And when I looked one week into it, I found out that I got the lowest salary ever given by Merrill Lynch. (laughs) That's amazing. But I, and, but I made it in. And that, was, it in. and that was a nine-year journey at Merrill Lynch. And, let, you know, let's... And, I left, and I left as a vice president. Within the three years, the first three years, I made it up, up the ladder, worked my butt off, understood every department, everything that is going on. And why I'm, selling, I'm telling you this story is because after nine years, at the height of my career with Merrill Lynch, I decided... I want to change career because it didn't mean to me what it did nine years before. I I wanted something different. So I started pursuing something different. And I left Merrill and opened up a company. I opened up a real estate company, investment company. And two months into that company, I learned more than I have learned nine years in Merrill Lynch. And two months into Merrill Lynch, or let's say one year into Merrill Lynch, 
the first year in Tamara Lynch, I've learned things that I would have never even imagined in college. So putting those things into context, you're saying, is it going to be relative? We needed to do what we needed to do for college and passing and doing our grades and getting, because that's the weapon in our hand to, to be able to go anywhere. So I didn't need to study all of that, but if I don't have it, I wouldn't have the chance to get the job like that. Mm. But I had to have it. Do I really, did I really use it in everything that I did? No, but it was the base of what I had. Those so a lot of times my kids tell me, I'm never going to use this. No, you're so wrong. And I was the same. I, I had a problem with chemistry, but when am I going to use chemistry? I don't want to do chemistry. <laughs> it's just too much for me. I don't want to do it. But you can't imagine how I used it through my life. But because the base was there, I didn't really actually use it, never, but it was there. It was always there. It was always useful. And if I didn't do the right grades, it would have affected everything else that I did. I that like, was, I like that. I like that. That process of, you know, it's not linear is what I'm hearing you say. It's, it's really very dynamic. Don't look at your experiences one, two, three. It's like one, five, three, four, 10, 12, and back and Absolutely. forth. Absolutely. Fantastic. And I love that you took us on that journey from being an employee to jumping into being an entrepreneur, which I believe, sweet, you know, it really brings us into my next question is what are the challenges that you faced? So aside from the, you know, the regular, well, I was a salaried employee. So at the end of the month, I was getting a salary. And as an, an entrepreneur, is that still the case when you're an entrepreneur? What other challenges do you face as an entrepreneur? Well, Opening up your own business and whoever says opening up a business is, is going to be easier than having a job. A lot of people and, and me and a young me for saying, OK, I, I take care of my own decisions. I do my own times. I, I can do whatever I like. That all went out of the window completely because you it is so challenging and it's so time consuming. It's crazy. It takes everything out of you because you start working triple the time that you would work as an employee. Um, it's, it's because you, you have to eat at the end of the month. And if you don't work, there's no money. <laughs> it's very challenging, that's for sure. Um, now, you have to deal with the stress. You have to deal with the long hours. You have to be absolutely passionate about what you do. Because if it, it wouldn't be easy uh, if you're not passionate about it. If you're not passionate about it, you will say quits easily. But if you have the passion for what you want to do, then you'll keep going. You know, there's a saying that is, I, I always loved it by um, was, uh, Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, in an interview, he once said, to start a company, you must be insane because you will be hit with so many obstacles and so many problems that the same thing to do is quit. And that's absolutely right. You have to be. You have and, to be passionate about what you want to do, but and, you always have to be ready. You always have to be ready. You have to be ready to, for whatever comes. And this is a lesson I learned from Mary Lynch. And it's, a, it's a, that you're always ready. If you're not ready with all your tools, you'll miss the boat. You'll miss the opportunity. Even when you're in a business, if you're not ready with everything and you know you have the facts, you know what to do, you have the plan, you're planned out completely, you'll succeed. Um, I'll give you an example I used to do in Merrill Lynch. In Merrill Lynch, I, was, I started when I was 21. I was the youngest financial consultant in Merrill Lynch Global. Um, and um, I would go, my job was to get investors. And I would be talking to people who are worth billions. And you have this little 21-year-old coming to tell them how to invest their money. It just wasn't easy. <laughs> <laughs> So um, what I would do, I would go and plan my whole uh, speech, plan my whole meeting to the extent where, when am I going to drink the coffee to that extent? And then in my bag, in my suitcase, I would have three different contracts. A contract if the conversation went this way, a contract if the conversation went this way, and a contract if the conversation went that way. So I'm always ready for whatever comes in. And that's how I've 
been trying my best to plan my life accordingly. You always plan and you're always ready for the opportunity to come in. So you're always planning to be successful, but to be successful is not just a frame of mind. It's actual planning. It's actual being ready with everything and the knowledge and the experience to take that opportunity when it comes in. I hope that makes sense. Totally, <laughs> totally makes sense. And I think what I'm walking away from is that it, the grit that you need, that resilience um, in the quote that you said about you have to be insane to go into business because the sane thing to do would be to drop out when it's really, really complicated. And I like that you brought Steve Jobs in because... Many young people look to icons like that and they think that's the rule. You know, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I'm going to be like that. But is it the rule, Ziad, or is it the exception in the world of entrepreneurship? If you look at every successful person, they would all tell you the same thing. All of them. I, I mean, I, I, I always uh, read about, I, I love reading about people's lives and successful people's lives and their experiences and what, and they all speak the same language. It's persistence and being ready. That's it. You have to be persistent. You have to be ready. You have to be planned. You plan your life out. You plan what you want. Now, there's a big difference between having a dream and having a plan. I am, I'm a big dreamer. I love dreams. I have big dreams. But if you don't follow that immediately with the broke, broken down plan of how to achieve that dream, you're not ready. So it's a plan to achieve that dream. So break out the dream into all the, all the way down to monthly objectives or even weekly objectives. But it all leads to that dream. And we have to be flexible about that dream because we grow up and we change and we, our personality changes along the way that that dream can be changed, can be tweaked. We have to be flexible about it, no problem. As long as we're passionate about what we're doing and we're going after what we want to do. And because at the end of the day, if you quit, that's when you fail. You don't want to quit. You never quit. You just keep going. And that same interview that I'm talking about was with Steve Jobs and Bill Gates. You know, Bill Gates said, something also in the same interview, he said, we decided when we opened up, we wanted to put a computer on every desktop. We didn't know that's going to be hard. <laughs> so a, he had a dream, but he was ready for it. It was a very difficult dream to accomplish, but they were ready for it. And it, there was a lot of obstacles along the way. Incredible obstacles along the way. We always hear what the good parts. We never hear the bad parts. And and I and this is why we have these conversations. This is why I'm so I'm so um, passionate about bringing in professionals to talk about their career journeys because it's in hearing these stories that we can understand what resilience looks like and what persistence, for example, looks like. Now, in what you've described. In, in just that little story that you told us in getting the first opportunity at Merrill Lynch and then taking the leap of faith and leaving a really comfortable, safe employment uh, to jumping out and doing your own thing. I, I saw patterns of an entrepreneur in that. I saw, you know, the skills that, that you need as an entrepreneur, the you know, the persistence right from that being 17 and having that conversation with your father and saying, I know I'm not on the right path to knocking on the door of Merrill Lynch and saying, I'm in Jordan, when do you want me to come back to then taking that leap? Would you say that, you know, you can pick an entrepreneur out of a crowd based on some of these patterns that you have witnessed? Or is being an entrepreneur something we can teach a young person <sighs> Uh, like teaching them a skill or a, a subject at school? Um, that could go both ways. Uh, there's, it's, it's all about focus. It's, you're not born with it. I don't believe that you're born with it. Anybody can be an entrepreneur if you're focused. It's about working on yourself. It's, it's more than actually uh, learning something from uh, just a school or uh, from your subjects. Your subjects, like I said, give you the tools. They give you the basic tools of going after the world. 
those are the tools. You need those tools. Those are the weapons in our hands to, to go into the world. And those are extremely important. But you have to work on yourself too. You have to be focused. You have to read. I mean, that's what I tell my, my kids. You have to read. You have to know what you want and, 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 know, and have different interests. Have an interest in the world and what's going on. Have an interest in the business world. Have an interest in art. Have an interest in music. Have an interest in a lot of different things that you wouldn't normally be interested in. Um, if you're in sports, open up your mind more into other subjects. So I'm hearing you say it again, persistence, number one skill. We, it, what other yeah. skills should a young, a young person be organized. preparing themselves for? They okay. have to be organized. Being organized is key also. Being organized and, and during, being persistent and organized. When you're organized, you start seeing a lot um, um, deeper into the future because you know what's planning. You, you will end up with a... With a um, uh, you, you will know how to do it. You will, you will start seeing things, how they unfold. And you start analyzing situations. And this is, this is extremely important in business because you have to make calls ahead of time. You know, in, in stocks, we would always say, uh, when you hear about it, it's too late. So if you're investing in stocks, if I hear about it, it's too late. I have to analyze and know about it before everybody else. Now, that's when you make the money. That's when you become successful. So this is a skill that you can teach yourself. And it comes from planning. It comes from being organized. Wow. Okay. Let's go to the flip side. We talked about the challenges. Let's celebrate some of the perks. What's it really like? You know, what are those things when you're like, oh, you're not an entrepreneur. You, you're missing out. What are some of those benefits? Oh. Uh, well, the benefits are really, honestly, it's, for me, it's just look, when you see what you have created and what you have developed and you see it successful and you see a product, for instance, if you, on, on, with people and people talking about it, it's the best feeling on earth. It, it, this, is, this is what makes it. You never, we never have um, money as an objective. And when you're planning and you're setting out your objectives, I would never put money as an objective. Money was never the objective. But money will come when, you're, when you do the right thing. If you put money as an objective, that's not passion. You cannot be passionate about money. So it's, the passion is about building something. It's about creating something. It's about achievement. It's about achieving something. And when you do achieve something that is, that is built by your own hands and with your own sweat, that feeling is absolutely phenomenal. Wow. Sounds great. It sounds, it sounds really exciting. Okay, Ziad, let's, let's talk about your new project, Delectia. Tell us what it is and tell us how the idea for this product came to mind. All right. Well... The Lectia is basically the, uh, the quick story, uh, and there's a story behind it. <laughs> the Lectia is um, fully frozen food, fully cooked, frozen, and um, uh, ready to heat and eat. That's what it is. Now, how it came by, it started, honestly, uh, it started in, when I was in college. I'll give, you, I'll give you a quick story. Sorry, I don't want to bore you guys with this story, but it's an interesting story how it came around and how long it took for it to actually materialize. When I was in college, I lived off campus with, uh, my roommate was Mexican. And actually his family were in New Mexico, we were in Washington state. And every week his mother would cook us traditional food, freeze it and send it by DHL on a weekly basis, same day, same day delivery. Um, and this is how we live. We just take it out of the freezer and um, we heat it up and we eat. And that's, we, that's how we survived. Then after college, I, I, um, I came back here, got, got my job with Merrill. I took an apartment. My mother would come visit and my fridge was always empty. I was living off burgers and pizza. So she would cook a, little, a, few, a few dishes, put them up in the freezer. And whenever I, I want, I just take it out and heat it up. Then I got married, and I got married fairly young at 27, and my wife was younger, so, and we both didn't know how to cook. 
So my mother continued what she was doing. You know? <laughs> um, so when we got kids, we had to learn how to cook. So Saturday, because we both work, Saturday became our cooking day. We would do exactly the same thing. It goes around. We do and we put it in the freezer. We cook a few dishes, put it in the freezer so we don't waste time during the week. So we are able to feed the kids. So we don't re re uh, resolve to junk food because the easiest thing is to just order in and um, have the, the junk, the burgers, the whatever it is. So this is where the idea was built from. And this is a lot of many people. <laughs> many people are exactly in the same position. I love food. I love to eat. And I'm a big foodie. And I wanted good food. But I don't have the time to cook it. So we, this is where Delectia is. Delectia is a traditional foods that all new generations have no idea how to make anymore. And this is what we're bringing to the table. It's traditional food that is healthy, low-calorie, very good for you, no preservatives, and a good technology that we've been working on for, for a long time in the right packaging that is, uh, it took us a lot of research and development to do. Um, it's not just Arabic food, it's not Levantine food. This is just a start. We started with 10 products and we're going to go up to 75. It's going to include Filipino, African, Mexican, the, and we want to be known for the traditional um, food of the world, basically. What we're giving is convenience more than anything else. Convenience for good food. That's incredible. <laughs> so here you are all this time later. I mean, when did you sit down and go, that's it. That's the next thing. That was, it, it first came um, around 2011, 2012. I always, you know, I, I, I left real estate. I opened up a real estate company. And for after six years, I sold it. And I said, okay, I'm going to get into the food industry. Now, I got into the food industry in a very tough way. I decided, like uh, Superman, I'm going to open up my own restaurant <laughs> and learn it that way. And I made every mistake in the book. Every, every mistake in the book. Even though I opened up six outlets, uh, not just one, I expanded and opened up six outlets and sold that business in uh, around 2012, 2013. Now, and, I just, and I found out that with all my experience and everything I know, I know nothing about food. So I decided to go back and get a job in the industry and be employed by a company so I can learn more. Um, and I did that for a few years because I wanted to create something. I, I knew this is the product that I wanted to create, but what it was in, in that time is nothing what it is now because it evolved completely. And so, this, is, this comes from experience and from learning and, and knowing the industry more and more. And we're going back to the passion. You had the passion for food. You saw the need. You saw the opportunity. You planned for it. And then you implemented it. And, and here you are today. Let's celebrate the success. Where can we find Delectia Food? Uh, right now, um, we launched about less than three months ago. We're already in 100 locations. We're in Spinney's, Waitrose, uh, Carrefour, um, uh, Union Co-op, Sharjah Co-op, Shwitrams, uh, Grandios, Talabat Online, Talabat Mart, uh, which is a supermarket, the virtual supermarket. Um, what else? There's a few more, <laughs> but we're, we're and we're going into 350 uh, locations within the next two months that are planned. Lulu is coming up uh, next month, um, and we're we're going to be in Saudi Arabia within uh, a month also. So, in listening to you right now, anybody watching this, I mean, it sounds absolutely incredible, and it's entrepreneurs like you that make us all want to be an entrepreneur. But you know. Last words before we open up the Q&A, last words for a young person that might be walking away and saying, we found the UAE entrepreneur genius. He made it sound seamless. What do you want to remind them about the journey you took to where you are today? Well, uh, now, like I said, uh, have big dreams, but be careful not to be a dreamer. That's the most important. 
To avoid it, you need to break up the dream into smaller action points uh, that you can achieve. Always be flexible also to readjust the big picture and tweak it to the better. That is flexibility is key. Um, now, I never ever have money as an objective because you can, you can make money in anything that you do well. Persistence is everything and never give up because only when you give up is when you fail. Those are my words for anybody who, who wants to get into the business world. Fantastic. <laughs> in any world, actually. <laughs> You're so right in any in any world. And we're going to bring our virtual world to a close here. We're going to thank everyone out in the virtual world. This was Desk Careers interviewing the incredible Ziad Bushnak, who is the genius behind Delectia Food. Who knew that at the age of 17, frozen meals sent from a roommate's mom could be the incredible idea that he pursues not too many years we're we're gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna <laughs> <laughs> we're not gonna make it sound too long ago but here you are so anybody watching this right now thank you for watching and we'll see you at our next desk careers digital spotlight